Let's talk about the structure of atoms, atomic structure. We're going to take a look at just the basics right now. Now there is an entire area of physics devoted to really looking at what atoms are made of, which is pretty amazing if you think about the fact that we don't, we can't even see them, right? We can see parts of them. Uh, but let's just take a look at the basics. This is what you need to know for chemistry right now, okay? There are three what we call subatomic particles. Subatomic meaning they're smaller than atoms themselves. They are what make up the atom. There are protons, there are neutrons, and there are electrons. Pretty simple. You've probably heard those words before. Two of the properties that I want you to be aware of are the mass and the charge of each of those particles. Some of this will make more sense as we go further on in the year, but for now we're going to understand that the proton and the neutron have the same mass. The mass is one atomic mass unit, AMU. And you'll see here that it says the an AMU is defined as one twelfth the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Well, I don't know what that means yet. Okay, It doesn't really matter. What you need to understand is that protons and neutrons have the same mass, Okay, but they're different in terms of their charge. Protons are positive, neutrons is, are neutral. Okay. But they're the same mass, and that mass is just, we loosely say it's one AMU, one, okay? The third particle is the electron. These things are really, really, really small. Their mass is one 1,837th the mass of a proton or a neutron. So small that when we look at the entire mass of an atom, we ignore the electrons because it would take 1,837 electrons just to equal the mass of one proton or neutron, and there are no atoms that we know of in existence that have that many electrons, so it doesn't matter. Okay? But the important thing about electrons is that they have a negative charge. They're exactly the opposite charge of a proton. When you think of electrons, you might hear the word electra as in electricity, and that's all electricity is, is just a stream of electrons. So electrons are super important. They're going to be very important in terms of chemistry as we go. Okay, Protons and the neutrons are in the nucleus of the atom. That's in the center. It's very, very, very small and very dense. And the electrons exist in clouds around the nucleus. If you were to think of how small the nucleus is, I want you to think of Camp Randall or a football stadium that you've been in. If a football stadium is the whole atom, then the nucleus is about the size of a marble right in the middle and it weighs about 20,000 tons if you scale up to the size of a stadium. It's extremely small and extremely dense and that's where almost all of the mass of the atom is located, is in the nucleus. Okay. So we have a couple of terms that I want you to know. One, atomic number. The atomic number is the word that we use to describe the number of protons in one atom of that element. Okay. So carbon, for example, has an atomic number of six. Hydrogen has an atomic number of one. That means carbon has six protons in its nucleus. Hydrogen has one. Okay? The identity of an element is determined by the number of protons. If you have an atom with one proton, it is most definitely hydrogen and not, not anything else. If you have two protons, it's not hydrogen anymore. It's now helium and so on and so on. So the number of protons tells you which element you're talking about. Okay? If you have an atom that is neutral, electrically neutral. What that means is that the number of protons and the number of electrons are the same. So you have the same number of positive charges as negative charges. They cancel each other out, no charge. Okay. If those two things are not equal, then you have something called an ion. Right? We'll see that in just a second. The number of neutrons does not have to be the same as the number of protons. Sometimes, especially in lighter elements, the number of protons and neutrons are the same, but they don't have to be. Okay. You can have any number of neutrons, not any number, but uh, the number of neutrons can vary depending on what element you're talking about. The larger the elements get, the more neutrons they tend to have. An atom's mass number, here's the second term, a mass number is the sum of the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus. So it's the total number of particles in the nucleus. So you add the protons plus the neutrons, you get the mass number. Okay. An atom's charge, now remember we said neutral means you have the same number of positives as negatives, no charge. If they're not the same, the way you can figure out the charge on the atom, which is called an ion, is to take the number of protons and subtract the number of electrons. The difference between those two will give you the charge. It might be positive, it might be negative. If there are more protons than electrons, it'll be positive and vice versa. Okay? So let's get a little bit of practice. 
So here are some elements, and I want you to pause the video right now and go to find a periodic table. You can look online in p at ptable.com, or you can look in your textbook, or you can look at the one that you were given in class. And I want you to find these four elements, carbon, sodium, argon, and iron. And I want you to find how many protons and how many neutrons. Pause the video, write it down in your notes, and then come back and we'll see how you did. All set, let's see how you did. For protons, you should have gotten six for carbon, 11 for sodium, 18 for argon, and 26 for iron. Did you get that? For, neutro for electrons, you should have also gotten six, 11, 18, and 26. These are neutral atoms, it says that right up top, which means the number of protons and electrons have to be the same. Let's try something else. Now I want you to find the mass number. Remember, the mass number is the protons plus the neutrons. Okay. You may need to look up some of this, but I'll give you some information. The number of protons in the elements are given and the number of neutrons are given. Write this down, pause the video, figure out the mass number, and then start the video again and we'll see how you did. All set? Let's see what you got. For cobalt, your mass number should be 60, 27 plus 33. For nitrogen, 15, 7 plus 8. For chlorine, 35. 17 plus 18. And for phosphorus, 32. 15 plus 17. Is that what you got? All right, one more. Now I want you to find the charge. I'm going to give you the protons and the electrons. Remember, charge is protons minus electrons. Write this down. Figure out the charge of each of these ions. Are you ready? So magnesium with 12 protons and 10 electrons has a charge of plus 2. Chlorine with 17 protons and 18 electrons has a charge of minus 1. Selenium with a number of protons of 34 and 36 electrons has minus 2 charge. And finally, rubidium with 37 protons and 36 electrons has a charge of plus 1. One thing I want you to notice about the way we write charge, if it's a positive number, we do put a plus sign in there. If it's negative, obviously, you put a negative sign in there. Okay? So charges are either positive or negative, and we want to make sure we indicate that when we write it down. So, a few different terms here, a few different processes of things to do. Very basic atomic structure lecture. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.